so today we're going to be playing Bant Eldrazi. I've been on this deck ever since we played it last week. I've been playtesting it a ton. Um, just playing around with it, getting better, a better feel for the deck, and then also making a couple changes. As far as the main board goes, I haven't made any changes. I like the way the lands are, so we're still with the the one of Breeding Pool, the one of Hollow Fountain, and one of Temple Garden. We got four fetches with the Windswept's. Um, we have four brush lands and then two Yavamai Coast, four Cavern of Souls, and then four Temples, and then one of each basic. Um, it, and then we have three paths, uh, four Ancient Strings, four Nobles, three Thalias, uh, four Displacers, four Sky Spawners, four Thought Knots, four Smashers, four uh, Jarners of Hope, and then four um, engineer, I mean, two Engineer Explosives. Um, I did try out a version of this um, based off my friend's recommendation to swap out the Thalias for three Scavenging Oozes. And I really think Thali is where we want to be right now with the meta. Um, oozes are great and very strong, but um, Thalia is doing a lot of work and keeping people off their game so we can push our game onto them. Um, in the sideboard, I made a couple changes. Uh, I'm on four Rest in Peace right now, so if you, if you saw an earlier version where we had the two Tefries in there, um, those are gone. And then I also added in a third Knight of Autumn and took out the Graph Digger's Cage because so, I have the Rest in Pieces. And I like this plan a little bit more. Um, Blood Moon really blows out this deck, so I wanted to get more Knight of Autumns just to help blow, uh, get rid of them. So I've been enjoying that a lot, and then uh, the life gains pretty huge with Displacer just being able to bounce it over and over. So uh, I've had some pretty good success with this deck so far. I've been getting a couple um, four ones and I think five O's, and. Uh, I usually can, I think I had like one, two, three. There was one really bad league where I went 0-3 and, and then I had to drop out of that one. But uh, overall, I've been very happy with the deck. Um, I'm pretty certain this is the deck I'm going to be on for regionals. Let me know if the volume or anything is too loud, guys. I did turn that down, but I'm going to go see what's up. Hate me at times. So this deck doesn't seem to have <coughs> this hand doesn't seem to have um, too much going on. I think this is fine to keep though. Uh, so those creature decks, these paths are gonna do a lot of great work for us, and then Thalia is pretty strong. deck. Um, I'm going to want to just get rid of that Dark Confident because I want to play the Thalia on my turn. Um, and I want to get us access to uh, Blue Mana here. So, um, I'll have a Hollow Fountain here. Untapped. Take some damage. And then let's go ahead and just path this Confident. and pass it over. Ooh, abs in. That was fine. Our turn. Let's run out a sky spawner. And then we're gonna swing in. You know, when, uh, interesting story about the Slalia, or funny story about the Slalia. Um, when it first got released, there was a bunch of people in our local group um, that were trying to get their hands on foreign Thalias, so then you couldn't tell if they had first strike if you didn't know the card. And I just thought that was so shady. Like, <laughs> trying to just edge up on someone because of that just kind of blew my mind that... They would have wanted to do that, so there was, that started like a big old debate um, online about that about, with our online group um, about whether or not you should be trying to just edge out a small advantage that way. 
Alright, so we are going to pass their confidant. We don't want them to get out of control with that. It does make it so we can't swing, so we're just going to pass this over. If our opponent doesn't do much to our board here, we'll be able to drop Drowner on our turn. Nice one to that boy for not going to block that. There's too much chance that they have a reward as well. And they'll be able to blow us out with it, so we're not going to worry about that. And I don't really want to trade both our Thalia and Sky Spawner for the Goyf. I just want to play the Smasher instead here because I can uh, swing through their board. And we wouldn't have to give up the Scion this turn. Definitely hit us for seven this turn, so I want to be careful of taking too much damage. But if they just let us swing away with the Smasher, they're going to be in trouble as well. Well, here we're just gonna drop this drowner, tap down their board a bit, and swing in. Drawing an EE -E here would be amazing. No Thalia. Okay. Well, they can swing in the air for eight, which is not good for us. Which means we really have just two turns here. I want to run out. Oops. Need that blue. Run out the drowner. Let's see. We swing with Smasher again. They would go down to seven. On their turn, they would swing all out in the air, putting us to one. Um, if they don't have anything else, we would be fine and we'd win that. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. We're just gonna swing with the Smasher here. So back to them. If they want to swing all out in the air, that's fine. We're left at one, and then we kill them. And they can't really swing on the ground right now. So let's see how they play this out. And if anybody does want to check out the list, um, if you're joining later, I believe the list is on Stream Decker Bot. It should be there for us now. Alright, we'll take it, go to one. Pretty good with that. Play this out. Play another Drowner. We'll sack our new token to tap down that Goyf. Oh, they can see it. Alright, so that was pretty good for us. Pretty sweet. Um, the cards that I want to bring in here are the Rest in Peace, 
uh, shrink that goy to make the lingering souls uh, a lot use pretty much useless and I want to bring in the deputy as well uh, it's a pretty worthwhile card I think this matchup uh, I also want to bring in the paths because they usually rely on like strong singular creatures other than the lingering souls um, the cards I don't want I think I'm gonna take out the sky spawners and bring in the rest in peace and then the path in the deputy uh, I think I'm gonna trim the two drowners for those and I want to keep the EEs they're pretty solid against this kind of deck um, I don't really want to bring in the stubborns um, I don't think they're worth it and I think the rest of the cards are pretty solid the only card that debatably we, we should be uh, cutting here would be Thalia it's not as strong against them yeah I guess I guess they're not as worth it here uh, especially with us being on the draw maybe we'll bring it back on the play so let's trim that let's bring the drowners back in and we'll bring in a um, bring it back in one uh, sky spawner <laughs> And how is everybody doing this fine Sunday? Oh, this ain't sweet. I'm going to turn one noble um, into a potential turn two thought not if we draw a temple. Otherwise, more likely than not, we're just going to be playing stirring, see what we can find, and then hopefully play thought not here on turn three. Looks like we have the option between caverns, caverns, or caverns. So I think we're gonna go with caverns. Let's run that out there. And then we'll pass it to our opponent. decide if we want to take the two here because we're not gonna if we don't path it right now we're not gonna be able to path it later because uh, we're gonna be going thought not into smasher into drowner so i think the best bet is just to path it right now because our turns are gonna be locked up for the next couple Take a peek into what their hands got going on. They got two swamps and a night of autumn, so we'll take that night of autumn and let's pass it over to them. There goes one swamp. strong chance they didn't draw anything otherwise they would have played it um so when we play the smasher here the problem for us is that we they have a hissing quagmire so they got the death touch business so i don't really want to run thought not into that <sighs> i'm not particularly a fan of running the smasher into it but i would be more of a fan of running the smasher into it than i am the thought not the problem is if we run the smasher into it though is that the scavenging ooze is going to become a three drop um, which means we may have to play the deputy so we can swing with the thought not next turn depending on if they get more things in the graveyard but i think that's where we're at right now because i want to keep pressuring them see i'm expecting them to activate block and then eat our uh, smasher Uh, we'll 
pass it over to them. Goodbye, Smasher. We hardly knew you. Alright, we still got one swamp in hand that we know of. Alright, Temple Garden here is pretty good. We can run out our drowner. So we're gonna do that. because a creature we're just going to tap down or, or hit with the deputy. Okay. Displacer is pretty great as well. Um, but like I said, we're just going to... Let's just take him out here. We're going to... run up this deputy detention. We'll hit their scavenging ooze. And then that should be game. Cool. Game one match. Game two match one over with. Uh, pretty sweet. Starting off the league strong. 1-0-2-0. -oh, -oh. That's how we want it. But yeah, I've been, I've been really enjoying this deck. It's, uh, like I had mentioned before, this was the first, um, the first deck I came back to with Modern, so it's pretty fun to play it again. This deck's always been really well suited, I think, for the format. Um, and then the meta just kind of pushed it out. Oh, this is fine. We got interaction and possibly a turn four thought on. Maybe we can get it earlier, hit a temple or something. All right, let's go windswept and pass it over. We're going to want this to grab a temple garden here. All right, let's run out of Thalia. And we'll just pass that over. Let's see what our opponent on with double basic mountain. Some kind of burn deck, I'm sure. Maybe goblins. Although goblins not having a one drop would be weird. Well, they're just gonna pass it to us. So let's swing at them. Let's see what they got going on. Nothing. Okay. Well, we're gonna run out this thought now. Let's see if we can figure out what they're doing. And obviously we do the temple because we're amazing at this game. Oh, they are Mono Red Phoenix. Okay. Let's think. Uh, Thalia is going to do great work against them. Makes their lootings and their Manamorphosis pretty bad. Do we care about the Arc Like itself? Or do we want to just hit the Faithless looting to make their hand really awkward and make it so they can't sculpt it? The arc like and the bedlam lover, we can only really hit one with the path here. So I think we're going to take the arc light and then we'll leave them with those really bad cantrips and then we'll just pass it over. Alright, they're going to gut shut our Thalia, that's fine. Metamorphos. Into another Metamorphos. Into that Faithless. Into a Lava Spike. Into a Pass It To Us. 
got all the Falias in the world. here. So let's see if they want to do that. No, they don't want to us first. There's the Reveler. And pass it back to us. We're going to path the Reveler. Hmm. Is that her? Better thought not. Um, what do we want to do here? Reveler is not that big. Yeah, you know what? Let's run out the thought not, and if they deal with the Thalia, and someone will be able to cast Swift Spiritual Scar and Faithless. Soul Scar Mage could get annoying here for us. Um, Faithless Looting can find them the fuel they need, but I don't really feel like them being able to shrink our creatures. Right, let's get rid of that one. Let's swing here. Let's see what they got. Swift Spear, sure. Back to us. And I think our plan here is to. We can just swing with the two Thought Knots, see if they try to cast a spell off to make the Reveler larger. And if they do, we can path it, get a spell out of their hand. And we can hold back the Thalia. And then afterwards, we'll be able to play the noble and path and hold up path. So we only have one unknown in hand. It's either that or path right now, and then that way we can swing with Thalia. But I think that leaves us in the same situation where Thalia could be running into a swift spear um, if they just act, cast one spell. So I don't really want to give up our Thalia. Because of that. Sure. We're going to have them. it over to them. Deputy's not bad here either. I don't think we need the Knights and the Stubborns or the Stonies. Um, I don't want EE here. It really only hits their Soul Scar or the Monastery Soul Scar, which I don't think are that big of a deal. Um, I want to be able to answer their Arc Light and their um, their Arc Light and their Bedlam Reveler. Um, then I think the other card I'm actually gonna cut. So like. I've been bouncing back and forth on this, whether or not we want to keep the Sky Spawners because they block the Arc Light Phoenix and they can ge get generated some mana, or we should be keeping the Smasher. I want to keep the Drowners because they seem to be able to hold people off pretty well in their big body. Um, so recently I've been trying to cut the, the Sky Spawners, and then we're going to bring all this in.
pretty solid hand here. We're just gonna go noble into displacer and ancient strings. Can't beat that. Center two from these decks because it usually means they're doing pretty powerful things. Okay, okay, I'm all, I'm fine with that turn of events compared to what could have happened. Um, so let's see, we can we can noble and ancient stirrings, or we can run out our displacer. Leaning towards noble and ancient stirrings because we could find ourselves a thought knot. And that would be pretty great. We'll fetch up a forest here. Let's see if we can find another temple. Not that appealing. We already have one in another land. So I'm gonna grab this drowner. And let's run out this one. Pass it to our opponent. Blood Moon. Okay, that's going to be a bit rough for us. We do have access to um, the green, all of our colors right now, fortunately. Um, so we can either run out Displacer or run out Thalia. I think Thalia is the way to go just to slow them down as much as possible because they've slowed us down quite a bit here. Well, that is pretty sweet. Let's see, we can either run out of Displacer or run out of Drowner. I like the idea of running out of Displacer here. And we're just going to pass it over to them. If they're going to spike us. Go down to eight. Run this out. And then we're going to run out of Drowner. Hit them back for five. If they want to swing in on us, we're happy to give up a Scion and then eat the other one. Doubt they're swinging though, but let's. You never know. there for us. That's all right. Play at the coast. Okay. So we can path one of them. I think what we're going to do is hold back the scion and then path the other one.
Just lost our ability to access white, so we're gonna have to pass this back. And a bolt will finish us off. Alright. Maybe we should reevaluate these EEs here. Because those guys definitely did a lot of work. Alright, this hand's got everything we want, but it's only got one land. We do have an Ancient Stirring to try to find another source, but if we don't hit two lands in a row here, we're going to be hurting pretty bad. Um, but we've got a low enough curve to where I think we're going to risk it. And we will grab that Caverns. We would love to hit a white source here. Pass it over. Spear. We did not hit that white source or a land, so we're going to have to ship it back. It's going to get real painful real fast. Really painful really fast. hand was a bit risky but I don't think it would have mattered because <laughs> if anything we played we would have died to that <laughs> pile so <laughs> oh that was such an aggressive attack holy crap opponent crushed us oh. alright let's see what we got here for game uh, match 3 Looks like we're on the draw. Alrighty. I'm gonna keep this in. It's uh it's got the lands we need and stirrings into a potential temple would be fantastic. Feeling, feeling an inquisition of Thoughtseize. There's probably an uh, ancient starting that's gone. I would imagine. Goodbye, ancient starings. We hardly knew you. I don't know what our opponent could a 
also be deciding on at this point. Still waiting on them. <laughs> oh, they lost connection, but they're back. Come on, opponent. I believe in you. Join the game. Do it. Join the game. Okay. Press okay. Oh, they did it. They finally did it. Alright, we're breeding pool. Just not shocking ourselves when we're gonna pass it over. Swap, pass it to them. Snapcaster into a Thoughtseize again. There goes Thought Knot. Goodbye, Thought Knot. We'll go get ourselves a Temple Garden here. Smasher is pretty cool. Moon Swap, we'll pass it back to them. Spawner. Pass it back to them. They're at one, folks. We connect with anything. We got this. <laughs> All right, fatal push against the that. That's kind of rude, opponent. Kind of rude. Oh, they're gonna snap cast and kill the other one. Oh, that's so rude. We wanted to do stuff too. Goodbye. I swear if they had like Death Shadow Max and Will Velocity, I would be so mad. Alright, well, we are gonna grab that hollow font and the plate tapped. And we're gonna drop this yellow Mayakos. And uh, see if a Smasher wins. Smasher does it, folks. Opponent did all the work for us. All the work. Alright, I want these resting pieces. For sure. I imagine they're on a Death Shell style deck, so I want to be uh, EEs here. Um, Thalias aren't bad against them as well, so it makes their turns a little bit slower. Uh, I've been really just taking out these Sky Spawners a ton. But I think that's what we're doing again. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna that. I really should be keeping them in more against the Blood Moon style decks because they give me access to um, to colorless mana when I need it with uh, off of just blue, which is very relevant. And I don't. 
consider that enough, I don't think. I think this is pretty much the hand we're looking for. Low curve with a noble and an ancient stirrings to help it out. And we have rest in peace here in turn two, which will be really awesome. Shut off their, what I imagine, their Gormogs. And their Snapcasters, if it survives. Does not survive. Does not survive. If only we were so lucky. Alright, let's turn out Brushland and let's run out Noble. We'll pass it over to them. So what do you guys think about that Modern Horizons uh, announcement? Dismember. Oh my gosh. Into another Thoughtseize. They probably take a bath. Yep. Alright. Well, let's see what it We got another land that we're probably taking here. Because I don't, th I don't think we're gonna be able to get time to cast Smasher or the Drowner right now. Because we don't have the lands necessary. We need like a temple. So we're gonna take the coast here, and I'm gonna shock ourselves here. Well, no. See that? Yeah, I'm just gonna play the coast here. Right? If I can avoid taking the extra one, I'm gonna do it. All right, we got a temple. That's great. And then we're just gonna pass it over here so then we can go temple into Thought Knot, into a breeding pool into Thought Knot. Death Shadow, okay. I still wanna run this Thought Knot out here, even though we got the uh, rest in peace. Alright, Tamir Battle Rage, Fatal Push, and a Thought Seize. The Fatal Push is not going to be online unless they get another land here. Battle Rage is the card that could end the game for them. So let's take Battle Rage. Well, Thought Seize is also going to push them over top and turning their Death Shadow here into a 6 6 next turn. But they're going to, reasonably, they're going to get any kind of, like, lands necessary to do that anyway. So they would hit us for six, putting and take our Thought Knot, most likely. And then we're just going to rest in peace them. And then they're going to swing again for six. Um, hmm. Alright, no, I think we're going to take the Thought Seize and see if they don't hit the land. Because if, if they don't hit a way to bump up that Death Shadow... Um, they'd have to burn the battle rage, so then we get to keep a thought not this way. So let's ship that back. They swing. We're not going to block because they can battle rage and just take the thought not. We don't want that. the rest in peace too. <laughs> Alright, let's run out another Thought Knot. We'll take that Battle Rage from them, put this Brewing Pool into pay, tapped and pass over. Blocking gets pretty bad for us here, so if we, like, if we were to block they lose their creature, we lose one Thought Knot, and then they get to Fatal Push our other Thought Knot. Which would be pretty bad. So 
So, yeah. So we can't block those. We would be, they would get to draw two cards. We lose both of our creatures, and they have. If we don't block, they can't battle raise right now. So, then let's just take the five here. Like, our best bet of winning the game here is getting a Drowner or a Smasher off the top. EE -E would be solid, too. Just to kill their Shadow. Another Gormok. I swear I'm getting so punished for not playing that Rest in Peace, but there was never a good time for it. I feel like playing it now is just kind of a slap in the face for us. <laughs> um... I think we're dead here, no matter what we do, because whatever we block, they're just gonna battle rage the other, um, the other card, and then we wait, wait, we oh, we exile the battle rage. Um, they have fatal push, so let's see. <sighs> block, block. Like we can stay alive a turn, but it's not great. Ugh. Kill the shadow. Chump the grandma. Give them two cards. Hope to get a smasher off the top again or a drowner to hold them off a turn. I think that's where we're at. Try this again. <laughs> uh, this hand's funny. Uh, so it's got a uh, pretty, like, turn, it's got turn two thought now, which is great, but <laughs> these are just offline. If we draw any other land, we can go smash it as well. I'm going to keep this because you know, double temple hands are really hard to pass up, but. Uh, this, this could go really bad for us. If they just even like turn one Thought Seize and take out the Thought Knot and we don't have a good response to that, uh, we don't draw like another spell that's relevant here uh, or a land to get us the other cards going, we're just going to lose. But, I really want Thought Knot turn two. So rude. Okay, so we can go Smasher here with the Caverns on Eldrazi, or we can play it on Humans, and that way we can cast um, Noble that should be able to get us to cast the Ancient Stirrings next turn. Oh. <sighs> We're just gonna go Eldrazi here. It's gonna give us the blue for the drowners as well. So you got a surprise for me? What is the surprise, Epoch? I'm excited. I think I'm gonna dismember it. Give up two cards for it. That's fine. Oh, that is sweet. Thanks, 
Thanks, man. That is awesome. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I think that's gonna... If, it, if you're telling me I can use that, I am definitely gonna put that on my uh, images for... Um, my profile picture for Twitch, YouTube, and everything. That is awesome. Can't wait for you guys to check this out. Uh, Epoch just sent me an amazing uh, image for you to use, I believe, for uh, the stream. This is pretty good for us. We're gonna to to go drowner into drowner. And with them at 10 here, they're gonna fatal push, okay. If they swing at us, we're just gonna take it. We're at 20. Snap cast fatal push or thought cities? Fatal push. Okay. Alright, in response to that, we're gonna tap down. So we can get a clean hit here. Alright, I'm gonna go for the swing. Yeah man, that is a perfect icon for me. Between this deck and Tron, absolutely fantastic. to win us the game. Drowner, Smasher, Displacer. Not that. <laughs> uh, okay. We're going to swing. They'll have to block. Um, and then we're going to go to one here. Still win with a smasher off the top here. Oh my gosh, we need a colored mana, folks. That's game. <laughs> oh man, if we would have drawn a, another white source, it would have been great. But uh, we did. We did, folks. I know, that hand was a bit greedy and everything, but it, it had a huge amount of payoff possible to us, and we could have definitely taken over the game because of it, so. Ugh. Sadness. to money again. <laughs> oh, this hand. Okay, that's better. <laughs> this hand's this this pretty punishing. Take a thought not. We're going to be left with nothing. <laughs>
Much appreciated, Epoch. I just you uh, updated the photos. I think that's all set now. Okay, they're definitely on. Were. So with the uh, with them being on war, I'm gonna run out the nobles here. And then just start beating them down with nobles, because they have a pretty hard time dealing with them. Uh. I gotta update my... Oh my gosh, EE -E, so strong against this though. Just kind of beat them and pass it over. <laughs> Alrighty. Never play some spells, but we're we're getting in there. If anyone wants to see the image that uh, Epoch just made for me, I just updated the uh, my icon here and on uh, YouTube, so it should be all squared away for that. Thanks again, man. That is that is awesome. I really appreciate that. Pretty good for us here. They're gonna add another card to their hand. They shouldn't be able to just drop everything. We'll be able to swing and then potentially drop Thought Knot to exile if there's a relevant spell at all. But. Land, okay. Welding Jar. Into our turn. Okay. Let's swing out with the team. Sky Spawner. Sure, man. You are the designer. I'll listen to whatever you want to do. Cloister, that means we aren't attacking anymore. Temple. Pretty bad now, too, seeing as how this thought knot can't attack. And can't take anything from them either. But we're gonna run it out there. And then we're just going to pass it over to them. 
All right, so now we either need to get another noble so we can start picking at them for one, or we need to hit our um, our E's and then use that to take out their um, ensnaring bridge. Um, it's not that great because we'll have to hit the welding jar, so we'd have to hit both of them, blowing up the zeros first and taking out all the welding jars, and then we would have to use hit the second one and get the ensnaring bridge. It's quite a lot to ask for, I know. But I believe in our deck. It's going to give it to us. Obviously, our deck needed to give us a land there because, you know, it knows that we need to get three colored mana. So it's just really getting us prepared here for the double EE that we're going to get. Start looping their pyrite. Is that a way they really reasonably win? EE -E number one. Our deck. How rude. got just a couple turns here so we really need to hit that EE -E. even if we did that I think we're still dead yeah go have Teleria it was not good for us folks not good at all Tiny sliver of an out. We are not getting what we need, folks. Hmm. We got four turns. No, no, it is over because they could just uh, well now make a welding jar, the uh, one welding jar, and that way it stays alive. Yeah, this this is over. Alrighty, so we don't need the paths. We do want the stonies, and we want the rest in peace. We also want the stubborns, the deputies, the and then the knight of autumns here. I'm fine with taking out the Drowners. 
Um, I do want to keep the Fall Knots in because we can exile cards from their side of the board. Um, I don't think we need the Smashers either. And then, let's see what else. Um, I guess we don't need the Sky Spawners here. I want to keep the Displacers because it can bounce the Deputy or the Knight of Autumn to cause a lot of um, good loops for us. The Thought Knots can exile a lot of stuff we can keep bouncing that. Thalia slows them down. Um, and everything else seems good. So let's run it with this. Banner seems good. I think I got the band up and going, so that should be all squared away. Alright, Stony Silence and Thalia here. Pretty strong. We'll keep that. The rest of this hand's pretty light, but. And we're just gonna go windswept, trying to snag up a hollowed fountain here into um, Stony into Thalia, most likely, and see if that's enough to hold the opponent off until we start drawing some more threats. DC as well. People just don't want to hang out with us today. They could be seen or something. Alright, they mulligan and then kept. Alrighty. One swept, passed over. So if you guys haven't seen it, I've been working on my room for like the last like, week and a half, two weeks, because I bought that yellow couch <laughs> and uh, needed to restructure my room so people can uh, hang out in my room if they're going to be joining me for the stream. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that couch, I'll be honest with you guys.
Okay. I really don't know what our opponent's doing, but uh, they are they are just sitting around. We got games to play, people. Games to play. This is Bant Eldrazi, yes. Uh, I think you should be able to pull up the deck on Stream Decker here, because I think I have that up and running now. We'll grab a hollow pocket here, pass it to us. And we're going to drop a temple and then run out of stony. Alright, unless we draw a thought not next turn, we're going to run out this Thalia and then see if that's good enough as a clock. Spell sky, okay. I'm gonna put the first one here as human. And then the other one will be on Eldrazi. Crucible and a Tezzeret. Okay. Well, we don't really care about the Crucible um, because the graveyard's irrelevant. Uh, well, we do, I guess. They, but they don't have anything for it right now. Tezzeret's two turns away. We'll take the Crucible for now and then see if we can get rid of that Tezzeret later. Friend by our block. <laughs> Little do they know. We've just got lands in hand. A displacer here would be pretty cool. Shallow on one, okay. Unfortunate since they just played a child someone. I hope they really just realize that they aren't going to be able to play the. And then now they're going to be another turn off because Botanical's going to come up tapped. Got another Thalia. Okay. Oh boy. This three a turn is pretty great. likely getting ensnaring yet there is ensnaring. And 
are still just get countered. Ah, oh, displacer. So we're gonna try to displace our thought knot here. If they wanna redirect it, they can. Or if they don't, we're just gonna take their Tezzeret. We also have an EE. Oh. EE can take get rid of Thalia and Stony. No, no, E can't do anything, because Stony's in play. So we're just gonna take their Tezzeret. And pass it. I win. Right, they're going to work for four, probably for Mild Cloister. That's unfortunate for us. We wanted to do cool things. Uh, replace Sky Spawner for no value. And then we're going to pass it over. Unfortunately, Noble would get countered by that chalice on one. So we have to pass it back. As bad as this is, I think we might just start putting cards in our opponent's hands here at this rate. So we can blink our thought not just to draw them cards. It seems like a really bad plan because it's going to put them closer to like an abrupt decay. Seems like a terrible plan, but we're gonna do it.
All right, we need them not to have anything for this turn. And then that should be game. Another spell's kite. Definitely makes things harder. Another ensnaring bridge. And back to us. Blinking thought not once would only let the sky spawner through. So I think we're better off just passing here. And then on their turn, we're going to try to just blink a couple times, depending on what they have going on. All right, that's going to make things much more difficult. Let's start with blinking the spell sky. on three. Okay, can't do anything about that. Okay, so we can blink their spell sky and then blink our thought knot twice to swing in with the two drops. We should have named humans. Oh, wait, I'm dumb. We could have been casting our nobles. I am so dumb. Oh my gosh. That would have been a little bit more power on the board. I should have caught that earlier. Okay. So yeah, that was bad on my part. We, we could have been doing that. We're just going to run off the noble and then pass it over. Rest in peace. make it harder for them to do anything to us. We're sending a message. We're swinging with this noble, letting them know that this noble's gonna kill them. Yes, this is designed to be a mid-range deck. It's just... Uh... Oh yeah, no, no, no Emrakul in this deck. This is The Eldrazi in this deck is the Displacer, the Sky Spawner, the Fault Knots, the Smashers, and then the Drowner. Um, 
and it's really just there to just be like it tries to go a little over the top with the a um, little bit over the top with the um, temples and accelerates it out and then also the um, also the nobles help you make sure you have a more consistent turn to thought knot which is just really strong if you can hit one of the temples instead of needing to hit a double temple um so yeah it's it's a pretty sweet deck um it's got access to band color so it gives you like the you know some of the best cyborg cards you can have access to which is really sweet all right opponents conceding to us all right so one of the flaws with the deck though is that if they play a torpor orb um we can't really do anything about it i uh thought about you know putting in some kind of like uh, spell that can uh deal with uh, Torpor Orb and Artifacts that way instead of just being solely reliant on the Knight of Autumns, but I just really haven't found a spot in the sideboard for it yet, and EEs normally can deal with it, but when you're, you know, shutting things off because of Stony, then you're, obviously you can't, so. Yeah, this deck's pretty interesting. I kind of like, the. I feel like this deck's on the lower end of the um, options, because then you also have, like, the Eldrazi Tron deck, which is like mid-range deck into this like late game ending Tron value, um, or just the regular Tron deck that does Tron things. So, but I don't know. I've really been enjoying this deck in the current meta, and I'm still pretty certain this is the deck I'm going to be playing um, at regionals. So we're just sitting around waiting for our opponent to think about things. Think about life, the meaning. Is it really 42? keep this this is an interesting hand so deputy of attention and knight of autumn i have a little bit of hate towards them because they're vidalcan wizard and dryad knight and not humans so cavern has to work a little bit harder to get those into play um and right now we can cast the knight of autumn if we name one of our caverns as uh, dryad or knight so which is most likely what we're going to have to do here Yeah, you don't see orb game one. Yeah, yeah. Normally you don't. You don't normally see sideboard cards in the main board, but I don't know. Some people, when you when when a certain deck gets oppressive enough in a format and they feel that it's taken over the uh, enough of it, that's when you usually see that kind of thing. Okay, we got two Knight of Autumns, so we're definitely going to be naming um, the caverns on Knight at this right. But we're just going to run out of temple right now and just pass it over. Yeah, Deputy really shouldn't be human. I mean, they already got Reflector Mage. They don't need another one. Brush 
brushland actually makes things a lot easier here. So we're just gonna run out brushland, and then we're just gonna pass it over. And then we can we have the option of either going Thought Knob, Deputy, or Knight of Autumn, depending on what they have going on. If they have nothing really of value on the board that I want to hit, I'm just gonna run out Thought Knot. Um, and then see if we can get him from there. Spell sky, okay. They don't need to name anything like that, so I'm just gonna run out thought not without playing at caverns. Bottled cloister. Tezra and Wur. Wur is definitely the problem here. You can get anything they want, so <sighs> let's get rid of that. So we can either run out Night of Autumn and blow up their Welding Jar, they redirect it to Spell Sky, and then we can't swing, then we cast our Ancient Stirrings. We can cast Ancient Stirrings and the Knight if we're willing to throw out the Caverns on Knight. Or we can just go Ancient Stirring first to see what we find. I think I like that. Alright, Displacer is pretty great here. So we're going to snag that. Any order. Run up the caverns on night. We're going to make them pay the two life if they want to save this welding jar. If they don't interact with us too much next turn, we're going to be able to go Displacer and then Blank the Knight of Autumn. Right, bottle Cloister, are they going to make that a 5-5? Five five? Oh, Chalice and Zero, they're probably making that the 5-5. Five five. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to swing at us, we have to just take it. Otherwise, this is good. Okay. So, if we run out the caverns right now, if we don't name wizard we might not be able to cast the deputy until we find a blue source here um but being able to just blink our knight of autumn it's just really good and i think that's where we have to be so i want to be able to do that this turn so we're gonna have to run it out and um, i'm not really worried about eldrazi's getting countered so i just want to make sure we can cast this i'm gonna go with the wizard here a little bit. Alright, alternatively we can blow up the cloister 
and get rid of the card in their hand and prevent them from drawing an extra card. That doesn't seem bad either, because we're not going to be able to swing this turn. They could hit us for 10 if we do that. I think that's fine. And if they want to save where the walling jar, that's fine too. love to be able to get rid of that Tezzeret on our turn here, which we can do depending on what they have. Because we're going to be able to blink our um, knight here twice, which is pretty awesome. That interaction is so strong. I got to do that life gain against uh, a red deck this uh, last uh, week when I my playtesting, and that was stupid strong. card we didn't want to see. Okay, well, we can still blink three times, so we're just going to run this out there, not shock ourselves. Blink their chalice, and swing on in. Kill Tezzeret, hit them, hit them. The snaring bridge, oh my gosh. So I think we're doing the same thing where we're just blanking this to make them draw a card. Oh wait, no, we're supposed to do that in our turn. I'm bad at this game. Alright, well that's a... Uh, that engineer can only be two which will get rid of the Torpor Orb. And then we are going to blink our Knight of Autumn. This turn, I honestly would rather get rid of the Bottle Cloister to get rid of four cards from them. And then we'll pass it over. Because they would have to like draw like exactly another Torpor Orb here to stop this interaction. Woot, got there folks. All right, last match of this league. After this, we're probably gonna run another league with Van Teldrazi, and that's gonna be it for tonight. Man, they didn't want to play with us. 
Sounds good, Epoch. Thanks for drop, dropping on by, and thank you again so much for the uh, the image and the banner, man. That is fantastic. Draw. If they have a hand disruption, this hand's gonna be pretty painful, but if they don't, um, this hand's gonna be pretty sweet. Looks like we got uh, Suicide Zoo here. And Displacer should help us hold them off a little bit until we drop our Smasher and a Drowner. If we can get that um, Smasher and Drowner on the board, we should win the game. We need to get another temple here on our next turn, or we need to draw like a thought not to hold them off. Deputy and the Knights here for a little bit extra life gain. Um, I'm not really in a big rush to go over the top of them. Um, I don't need the Thalia, so it does not seem like they are on too many spells. Um, I'm not sure if they're on Goyce or not. Rest in peace will be relevant for the Goyce, but against everything else, not really that big of a deal. I think I'm going to cut the Drowners. Um, and we're going to run like this until we see if they have a Goyf. this 
Uh, it's got a Knight of Autumn, so we're going to keep it for that Life Can and Displacer, and we've got a um, Ancient Stirrings here. We're going to lead off with a Breeding Pool, shocking ourselves into that Ancient Stirrings. the EE here oh, to take out their creatures or we can grab the brush land to make sure we can actually drop the smasher and activate the displacer let's let's go with the EE that should be all of their creatures to be honest and it'll give us something to play next turn I would imagine they would take the EE here, but maybe I'm wrong. Temple not shocking ourselves and pass it over. So we would love to see a, a temple here. Okay, they do have the goyf. We're gonna run up the knight. Let's gain some life. And we'll pass it over. Turn that down at the beginning of this. All right, our plan here is just to run out displacer. Hopefully, we hit. Okay, so we didn't hit the land I was hoping for. Land we could bounce our knight here. I'm inclined not to block here. 
I would really just like to hit a temple or something, then we're going to be able to swing at them and hold up the, the effect in the, while also being cast, uh, casting the noble here. So, okay. That's close, I guess, for one turn at least. We'll be able to blink, so. We'll run off the sky spawner. And. We're just gonna pass it over. I think we have to block here. So we're gonna block that. Gen of growth, they're goif. Are they gonna battle rage it? Yeah. That's unfortunate. Ugh. Alright. No bueno. Alright, we're gonna 